We made it! Welcome! If you are new here, hello, my name is Brenna. I am your accent appropriating DM and welcome to Tales from the Catacombs. This is our tabletop RPG adventure that we are thrilled to share with you. This game uses the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition D20 system and rules. And the setting is a homebrew based off of the rock album Razia's Shadow by Forgive Durden. Fantastic. You should absolutely listen to it. It's not spoilers. It's spoilers. We have a brief introduction that to the setting that you can read at your leisure, and I hope you will, so that you can be as immersed in the world as our players are. And without further ado, please enjoy this episode of Razia's Shadow, a thousand year interlude. Let us recap. Last session. Session three. What goes around? After completing their test, the novices were left to their own devices once more. Bo assisted Viola in finding the man who had conveniently forgotten about her sparring request. With a bit of roguish diversion, Bo assured that Viola got her fight, though the man, whose name we learned was Torval, didn't respond quite according to plan. Viola and Torval traded blows with the others first attempting to help and then backing down upon request by the fighters. They continued their spar one on one. Torval's rage smoothed out into exhilaration. At last, Storkum the Avenger, the one Viola really wanted to meet, interrupted the fight. He complimented Viola's character and said he hoped to face her one day when she was better trained. Then he led Torval away. The novices went in search of their new halfling friend, Lear, meeting a few others on the way, some less than friendly. They took a break in the barracks lounge while waiting on Viola to clean up after her fight, since Bo seemed to be insistent. Snow focused on a piece of mail he received, even though it was their first, their, just their very first night. Stayin contemplated quietly over something in her hand, and a vivacious novice named Arnaud snuck up behind Bo to introduce himself. Arnaud immediately gave the impression that he knew more than he should, and even had some answers to questions lingering in Beau's mind. As a show of friendship, Arnaud told Beau to meet him at the stable near midnight if he was interested in visiting the rally district at last. So, we made it back, guys. So where last we left, actually, where we last actually left, <laughs> I believe there was a girl who was screaming and, and crying and very upset. She all had a very eventful evening. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna be fine. The clarifications, I, I just stole from her and gave her something back. That was all it was. <laughs> I just stole from her, that's all. And that's gave all. it back. She got it back. This and part for, is important. And for, all she, and for all she knows, she dropped it because I had very good deception. I gaslighted her. I think she even thanked you. <laughs> <laughs> I think Maybe. there might have been even a thank you. Oh call. no, I think she was still pretty salty with me. <laughs> Fair enough. We are, you are in the lounge, in the lounge area. Viola, it shouldn't take you too, too much longer to come back and join them after you've managed to clean yourself up a bit. Maybe a few nice little scars to add to your collection. Just a couple, just a couple of good hits. But otherwise your armor definitely was able to protect you. Your very nice armor from the majority of those blows. But you do still have the evening. Snow was looking over a, some mailing he had received. Stayin was contemplating in her corner. Yes, and on that, <laughs> I remember because I wanted to do a religion check on what I on what I saw Stayin looking at. Ah, indeed. So All I'm right. gonna roll that now. Religion. What were you looking to learn about it? I wanted to see if I recognized it at all. I got a 12. A 12. To see if you recognized. Okay. It was almost a 17. Oh, no. <laughs> Which would have been a psychotic 19. dice on it? I can't. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have any skill in religion. Bo doesn't need Oh, religion. is it only for things you're proficient in? Correct. But I am proficient at eight things, and I will get more proficiencies. <laughs> Oh, I see. Lovely. Well, then I'm sorry you can't use your psychotic dice. I don't you, you, from the peak, from the glance that you got, you 
Bo, you were trying to do an arcana check religion. to see religion. what you know. Religion. Unless you want religion. me to do arcana. Religion, I'm sorry. I can roll check. again with arcana. No, that's all right. You're fine. If you wanted to do religion, then that was the one you picked. It's fine. Well, totally. she's religious. I thought it would make sense. How would you know? <laughs> I mean, how would he know? You know? <laughs> I mean, she's healed she's people she's around. Like... Has she even had the chance to... Well, I mean, she did lay some hands and such. and You know. She also did uh, the radiant shield thing. Of faith. Well, she did shield it, but when in the session zero, she did the cantrip that was... Cleric mm. specific, the radiant damage one. Yes, you could assume she's religious. Sure, we won't. <laughs> we won't be mad about your assumptions here. So you rolled a twelve. Yes. Okay. <laughs> from the from what you're able to glean from what is in her hand, you might you might recognize what particular deity it could belong to. You don't know much about the deity. You couldn't say, you know, oh, because of this, she must believe da da da. But you could probably pick out. You could probably pick out a name, and I will. Message I will message that later. to you. Oh, or yeah, now I'll message that to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ooh, fancy! I get it now. All I need is a name and some book, and I'll, I'll crack Stan's whole game. <laughs> <laughs> she is no longer. She's no longer mysterious underneath all that armor. <laughs> Just begun. We've only <laughs> just begun. Anyway, so yes, you reckon you probably are able to point out a name, but that's about as much as you know, not being a particularly religious man yourself. All right. So I believe Arnaud was on his way out after speaking to you, Bo. Uh, the girl who you upset, the blonde braided, travel prepared young lady, went off to the women's barracks out of this lounge area and between the two sets of barracks. But you guys are here. What would you like to do? The evening is yours. Snow found the comfiest chair that was open and he is reading his letter. Excellent. With and it brings you much joy. <laughs> I love it. I'm just imagining him kicking back and just, he's read this thing like four times by this point in a matter of like two minutes. <laughs> oh, <yes. Need> reader. <laughs> so if I was going to approach oh, yeah. Stan and just kind of not sure. Hey, hey. Wh who do you think that's from? Pointing over at the <laughs> snow. <laughs> I don't think that's for us to know. Okay. Well, we could still speculate, Stan. You have you have <laughs> Do you think it could be an ex lover or a current one? Or her his mother or father? Like all of those are possibilities. Yes. But which one do you think it might be? <laughs> I would imagine it is from someone who means something to him. Hmm. What about an ex? I would not think an That's probably true. It probably wouldn't be. Ex would bring that level of merriment to his face. Hmm. This is this is probably fair. Hmm. You think he'd tell us if we ask? <laughs> it's possible. Are you not curious at all, Stan? <laughs> I respect people's right to have a private life. Okay, respect is one thing, curiosity is another. <laughs> you can have curiosity and still have respect. My curiosity doesn't matter. You don't find it curious that we're not even here for 12 hours and he already got mail. Imagine the world moves differently. I hear y'all over there. Oh. <laughs> well, do you want to answer any of my questions? <laughs> Would you like to address them to me? <laughs> okay. Who, who, who's the letter from? None of your business. Just kidding. I it's from my sister. So. Okay, but that one did not cross the list, really. Your sister. <laughs> and, uh, Indeed. how's she doing? She is, from what it sounds like, she's doing quite well, actually. I'm very excited for her. Ah, I see. Is home far away for you? Oh, yes. It's uh, quite a walk. Quite a walk? Are you up in that fancy area? Up north? Do I, do I look fancy? 
Well, you don't, but it doesn't mean you're not from someplace fancy. You've been walking a while. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't know, which fancy place are you referring to? Well, the capital? I'm not from the capital, if that's what you mean. Well, to be honest, I'm trying to find my map, so I know. <laughs> Give me a... <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Where was that now? <laughs> oh, there it is. So you're saying you're not from... Oh my gosh. <laughs> Vandalia? That is correct. I am not. Vandella. Vandella. <laughs> I'm not from there either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. That's sounds. Am I close? No, not really. Okay, so then you're far coming from the other direction, probably. West. All right, keep this. my backstory real quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one that was like, I was shooting. <laughs> they could be doing this over drinks in the bar, but instead we're going to have the awkward conversation of, hey, Just... who do you think that letter is from? I don't know, leave him alone. Hey, but I want to know. <laughs> well, I thought we were waiting on Viola, so I was just buying time. It wouldn't take Viola, Viola much longer to, to get back to you guys. Um, oh, am I back out there? <laughs> you you certainly could be. You you could be there by the time they are now discussing this letter from his sister. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. I'll just walk over and be like, okay, Bo, is my appearance better for you now? Much better. <laughs> you look what did I miss? So I got a letter from my sister. That's what you missed. <laughs> so exciting! <laughs> uh, are you just the two of you guys or do you have other siblings? Just me and my twin. Oh. Twin? I'm sure it sucks being away from her then. Away from her. Maybe he wanted time. It does. No. Okay, never mind. Wait, then why why didn't she just come with you? Is she sick? No, no, of course not. She's fine. Okay, well sorry, we just sickness have different happens. Career goals. <laughs> We just have different dreams and things that we want to do in life. Ah, she can't play music. I mean, not as well as I can, no, but it's, she's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> For your information, she is a very accomplished wizard, so. Exciting. I'm very excited for her. She's very smart. She is literally the coolest person ever. Hmm. Well, I would love to meet her someday. I hope you get to. Oh, she's cooler Nora. than she's cooler than Nora. Then <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know Nora, but yes. I mean, you seemed kind of chummy with her yesterday or earlier today. Jeez, now I'm forgetting that's the same day. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed it has. Yeah, it was I don't her know kindness about... that allowed me to be here, so yeah, I think she's pretty cool, but no one compares to my sister. Okay, well that's is sweet the right word? Is that what I'm trying to is that Yes, it is, is that very appropriate? Sweet. Okay. <laughs> Sounds sweet. Snow. <laughs> so are we getting drinks and are we finding Lear to get some well, to be honest, she never said what she was going to cook. She just said she had bacon grease, which I'm hoping <laughs> that's not the only thing she's cooking. Would not make a great supper, no. So do we want to go hunt her down or do we want to just go get drinks or do we want to just make our way to go get drinks and hunt her down at the same time? Both. Both sounds great. So the last option, three. Yes. <laughs> Is that what's agreed upon by the group? Let's do it. Well, Let's Snow do is like, we're finally getting drinks! <laughs> so, approximately, Bonding. I know it's only been like 30 minutes since our test, but approximately what time of the day would it be? It's 
because the time of year it's late summer so even if your test was at sunset that would still be fairly late so it's probably around nine ish okay so i've got about three hours before <clears throat> stable time three hours before stable time <laughs> <laughs> maybe there's a yes, better way to put that right. <laughs> so stable way to put it <laughs> <laughs> Catherine strikes again. You guys make your way. <laughs> so you make your way back downstairs. And as you're walking past, even just in this lounge area, the energy in the room around you is just very tense. It's very frenetic. There's, and for everyone who's sort of walking in and out, is chattering with someone. If they're by themselves, they seem to be either deep in concentration or they've already got a drink in their own hands. They might be snacking on something, but they're very focused on something. If, oh, so little bits of overheard conversation, just very brief with some people. A lot of it seems to be surrounding the test that you guys just took. A lot of people are talking about it, talking about what they did right. A lot of talking about what they did wrong, even. And you sense this just as you're walking through this, the whole of the of the novice hut heading back downstairs as you're heading back you go through that hallway that initial hallway that was leading from the wild pike and coming in from one of the doorways that was leading out towards that garden area coming in you do spot lear you see the little halfling with her black hair she has a, a little golden ornament in her hair you see her and her simple, her simple armor. As she's coming inside, she very quickly closes the door behind her and seems to start quickly heading in the direction opposite you. Hey, Leo. Hi, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I thought she. I thought she, I thought by the description that she was like kind of walking, like didn't notice us. That's, that's why I said it so abruptly. Because she was, yeah, she was heading away. Okay, good. And just good. all of a sudden, you're all shouting, "Lear!" <laughs> you're about to make good on that, dude. <laughs> Gosh, dang it! Um, and she does. She kind of jumps and, and turns around, and she's like holding her chest. But when she sees you, she does calm when she sees you, and she waves back. Oh, there you are. I'm sorry. I, I must have gone right past you. I didn't see you. I lost track of you after the test. No we got a little sidetracked. Yeah. yeah, we were a bit busy. Just seeing busy the sights. already? Yeah, just seeing <laughs> just the sights, here. you know? Gotta take it all in. All this area. It is Might nice. have gotten in a quick fight. <laughs> huh? No, no, no. She said, might have gotten in a quick fight, but... That's... That that happens. <laughs> you did? They did. Uh, yes. yes. Well, yeah, Viola got into they... a little bit of a tussle, and it's fine. Um, but, Leo, what have you been up to? <laughs> Me? Oh, I I was looking for you. I had gotten, and, and she starts going through a, a pack that's now a back on her. She pulls out this little glass jar Few, it looks like it holds a, a good few ounces, and it is full of a kind of pale, dusty brown looking substance. It's kind of gel not gelatinous, but it's like a pasty kind of substance. Mm. It's got little bits in it, and she holds it up as promised. Oh, um, so what? what's the idea to like make out of it, like cook with it? You know... I hadn't really thought that far. I just got excited. I get excited about cooking. I'm so used to cooking for my siblings, I figured. I, it seemed like the right thing to say. Oh. We can look at the mess hall and see if there's something there that we could... You know, I don't even know if they'll let us use the kitchens. Oh, I did not. I did uh, not think, I think this through. I think they'll let us use the kitchens. Snow's got a way with people. He knows how to talk to them into things. Right, Snow. Depends on the things and the people, but it doesn't hurt to ever ask. So, I think we should find out. You look like you could use a good bite to eat this evening as well. Oh, definitely. And she, her, her other hand sits on her stomach, and she, she nods and 
<laughs> kind of points in the direction. Well, shall we? Let's go. Uh, so we're not... And as we walk, Snow will will walk next to her. So, okay. <laughs> so how many siblings do you got? I'll ask as we're walking. Uh, total? What? Fourteen. Fourteen? Yes. I have seven brothers and seven sisters. Well. Hmm. Were there like some twins? Where do you fall in the order? that batch or something? <laughs> well, I'm the oldest. That's why I cook for them so often. I do a lot of things for them. <laughs> Wait, you're... Imagine. You're the oldest. Wait, how old does she look? She, if I would call for the mini, <laughs> she hasn't looked that old. I'm on her age. Yes, yeah, I mean, she is a she is a halfling who age a little differently than just a little differently than humans do. Roll a perception check. All right. <laughs> That's the rule. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the TikTok video. I got 13. A 13? Yeah. Okay. She looks she doesn't look particularly odd for her age she looks good for her age supposedly what is her age assuming. that's uh, what i'm wondering <laughs> how how versed are you with uh with how halflings should look um, a 13 I... doesn't seem like much <laughs> yeah and it's definitely not worth a psionic dice so <laughs> from the sounds of it and just from the looks of her she 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 looks she doesn't look particularly old as far as human years go, for sure. But she does seem to have some, she has some lines, like kind of maybe slightly deeper laugh lines. But also she seems like a very joyful person. She might just have big joyful cheeks. It's a little hard to tell. But she doesn't, she doesn't look necessarily out of place for her age as a halfling. For whatever that might be for having 14 siblings. <laughs> I see. She look good for her age. Get it, girl. <laughs> so what? So are you the first one of your siblings to like leave the house? No, no, I'm not. In fact, I might be the last, if not for my littlest siblings. Just they. When you're the oldest, I I, I don't mean to speak out of turn. If you also have little siblings, but. In my family, when you're the oldest, you do a lot of help with the caring. And when there are so many to care for, which is such a great blessing, when you have so many to care for, you want to stay. You want to help. So I've done a lot of staying and a lot of helping. I've seen so many of my brothers and sisters go off and they've gotten married or they've become adventurers or they've become merchants. They're very good. And I stayed home and helped. Yeah, I'm an only child. I don't really get any of that stuff. Oh. But, I mean, you do you, I suppose. I will. <laughs> Leah, what's your favorite color? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> My favorite color? Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, that's difficult. Um, let's say... Gold. What, what color are her eyes? Lear's eyes. She has kind of light brown eyes. Okay. As we walk, Snow begins to fashion a flower crown out of yellowish gold flowers. He's just gonna do that while they're walking. And she sees that and she's admiring as it's being made and she's just fascinated as you're forming them. Are they, these are magically created flowers? Yes, out of my staff. Yeah, and she's she's watching you. And you are you guys start to enter into you enter through one of the doors and you've entered into this large and long room. There are numerous tables about and the sound increases immediately as there are more people who are sitting, eating, drinking, sharing stories, more of that kind of frenetic energy all throughout. Some people kind of going past you, stumbling and laughing and giggling, looking a little off, looking a little off center as they go past. But Lear is looking at these flowers being made and she says, that's incredible. How long have you been able to do that? 
Uh, as long as I've had the staff and you can you can see by the way that like he's doing this as they're walking like he's whole he's got the staff like in the crook of his elbow so that he can use both of his hands to craft this to craft this crown pulling out flowers and tying them you can tell by the way he's doing it he's been he's done this a few times <laughs> a fair few times and when it's completed he will present it to her and she just gasps and she takes it and she spins it about in her hand for a moment as she's eyeing the detail and she points out all these little these little details about flowers just this this knowledge she's pointing out knowledge the dm doesn't exactly have but think about your eighth grade science class when you learned about the insides of flowers but she's pointing out these little details she's even discussing you know where different types of these flowers might be found and seasons that they're in bloom and in different parts of the world as she's putting it on her head and then she sort of starts posing and modeling it for you. Does it match? Does it look okay? You look wonderful. Oh, thank you. You must have siblings. I do. It was actually my sister who gave me the staff, which is why it is one of my favorite things. That's incredible. I love it. I love it. It's, and you must have made a thousand of these for her. Of every color and every shape. She's so lucky to have you. Are you the older sibling? I am. By like what? Five seconds? Shush. <laughs> are you twins? <laughs> yes, we are. But I am still the oldest. That's how my two of my, my siblings also talk about it. I have uh, two brothers who like to fight over being the same age, but one insists but he is older. <laughs> what is everyone's passive perception? Bose is a 12. 14. Also 14, 12. 12. What was it saying? 14. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> As you guys are walking, you're heading through the, the small bit of crowd in the, in the mess hall. <laughs> you, Saiyan and Viola, as the other two are distracted in this conversation about siblings and flower crowns, you guys notice one particular person seems to stand out in this crowd. Not for any reason that they are saying anything or doing anything different, but simply in appearance alone. In this sea of humanoid bodies, tall and short, different tones of skin, different dialects, different conversations, in the very far corner, you notice multiple heads above everyone else, this not quite humanoid shape, a very furry shape, large, bulky, cute little stubby ears of what appears to be a polar bear. In the corner, sitting by itself, kind of swiping slowly at bits of food and off of a plate. You hear a little bit of clattering as the paw comes down and it just brings the food towards its mouth and starts to lick and then chew on bits of meat on that plate. No one seems to be saying anything to it. But in the corner, as you guys are walking, you too notice this polar bear in the corner. Um, hey, does anybody else see that big white bear in the corner oh my goodness i bet the only ones who notice it and then Lear also sees kind of cocks her head to the side hmm unusual in these parts you think it could be a uh, one of those like tree hugger people that go into like different animal shapes you know you mean druids yeah them Tree huggers? I mean, most of them know all about them. Bo. What? Bo has a knack for saying things that could be potentially neutral or <laughs> in a very not neutral or good way. <laughs> but that's he seems, okay. He seems uh, a type. I mean, have you ever have you ever tried talking to a druid? Hmm? There actually aren't a have lot of you? druids where I'm from. <laughs> huh? Have I? 
oh sure and they can't stop talking about trees and all that other stuff it's almost like well you win those roses but <laughs> that's neither here nor there anyway if they aren't drawing attention to the bear i imagine there's something going on there do they it does it have like any kind of any kind of clothing or something like that anything now that you see it, it does appear to be dressed in some kind of loose cloth, uh, a loose kind of tunic cloth. Looks a little bit torn. See, torn tunic. That's a classic sign of somebody going all beastie. But... You said he's sitting by himself, right? Nobody's over there talking to him or anything? Correct. Do you think he's lonely? Maybe we should go introduce ourselves. I don't know. If he wanted other people to sit with him, I don't think he would be a bear. Well, maybe it's not his choice. Who? Or maybe it's a girl. Okay. I think you should go talk to them, and uh, Bo and I will go to the kitchens and find out if we can use them. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I think I'd be more capable of helping out in the kitchen and try and talk to a bear. <laughs> Well, I just feel bad for him sitting all there by himself. I'll I'll walk over and say hi. Okay. Uh, Lear suggests she ought to also maybe stick to her own best practices, which is probably in the kitchen as well. She she seems very much to enjoy the cooking, so she'll go with the gentleman. Um, uh, Stain, are you joining Viola? That and keep an eye on things. She's not really interested in talking to the bear or making another new friend. She has quite enough of those already by now. <laughs> okay, cool. Sorry, I missed the first part of yeah, it. You said first... you were standing behind at a distance, or? Just sort of stepping out of the walkway, making sure she's not... Gonna get mauled to death. <laughs> 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 okay. So, Viola, you approach. The polar bear is quite invested in the... You can now see it's multiple plates, in fact. He seems to have finished with one of the plates that had... What well, currently has the large carcass of a full chicken that he his paw or its paw kind of pushes aside, and another plate has a large assortment of sliced meats, like red meats. That that one it now begins to kind of scoop with some of its claws, very clumsily scoops some of that up, and again kind of brings it towards its face starts licking at it until a piece kind of sits perfectly on its tongue enough to flip back into his mouth. Then he continues with some more of those pieces. Viola's just gonna, she's gonna definitely like stay her distance and like not walk up too close, but she's just gonna wave and say, hello. Um, I just saw you sitting over here by yourself and didn't know if maybe you wanted to make a friend and thought I'd come over and say hi. It looks it stops licking the food, looks over towards you, kind of sniffs in your direction. You can now see the kind of wetness on its nose, its dark nose compared to the rest of its white fur. Then you hear this low growl. Okay, uh, gotcha. I will leave you be. Uh, have a great day, and I'm going <laughs> to turn and go away. <laughs> <laughs> and you beeline it back towards Stan and the others. <laughs> and it I goes back it. to sniffing and licking and eating its food. Viola, you were not gone very long. How did it go? Uh, not a friendly bear. So, but I mean, I'm not going to let that deter me. You know, you never not know when it's going to be a great time friends. to make a new friend. But he wasn't ready Some for a new friend. So that's fine. Some people need their alone time. That's how it is. Mm. All right, to the kitchen. Yes. Do we see someone who seems... Do we see a cook or other person who seems to be in charge of the kitchen? So as you guys were heading in that direction, and it did not take long for Viola to catch back up to you, <laughs> you, you do see uh, an entrance, a, a doorway leading towards what appears to be not a busy area, but definitely it feels warmer. As you step through, there are fires going over some kettles. There are some other little cooking pits with cauldrons over them. Most of those are put out, the cauldrons cold. 
And then there's other little fires that have sort of spits that are someone is back there keeping it. There are a couple of people back there. It seems like this area is not currently being run by someone in particular. It seems people seem to have a bit of of leeway in there. Well, Lear, it looks like you can just cook then. Those are my favorite words. <laughs> and she immediately <laughs> starts looking around for ingredients. And with almost her own kind of magical speed, she's collected a series of spices that all smell phenomenal before she's even done anything with them. She finds in some drawers or some cabinets utensils. She finds some, it seems, some available pieces of meat. They're not whole chickens, so we're not sure where the bear got it from, unless it was pre-made. But she does find some simple but suitable meats that she can cook, spice them up. And before too long, she does, in fact, have a very simple, probably not super filling based on what she was could find, but a nice, simple treat for a late night snack. And she serves you these slices of white meat some fowl <laughs> that has been seasoned with, for this group, potentially seasonings that are not as familiar. And as you guys find a table in the main mess hall area, she's very proud to bring the dish out with her and have you guys sit before she presents it to you. And she says, it is a specialty from my home. My mama loves it. It's it's her favorite. It was so funny. It was when she was when she was pregnant with my youngest, my youngest sister. This was all she would ask me for. It was, and she says a word in a, a different cant, a different speak. Is it thieves' um, cant? It is not thieves' cant. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. A I could actually had a friend. A kindred spirit. <laughs> I was, for half a second, Ooh. I was like, wait, do halflings speak? Is there a halfling Yeah, there is a, there's there a halfling is, I know language. there's gnomish. I didn't know if halflings spoke just common. Oh, wait, but maybe it is. Is it just common? I was trying to remember halfling, off the top of my I'm head. I'm pretty and sure halfling is, a, is its own language. Yeah, does anyone speak halfling? <laughs> I do not. Nope. Excellent. Someone on YouTube is bound to be like, um, actually. <laughs> Halfling we'll do... language is a thing. So, cool. We'll um, do that when we get there. <laughs> could I? Could would Snow be able to recognize it though? You know how like you can recognize a language even if it's not a language you know. Be like, oh yeah, I can tell they're speaking Spanish even though I don't know Spanish. Give me a history would check. All right. Yeah, yeah, and it is just called Halfling. I just looked it up in this. Thank piece. you. Yeah. This is why we rely on you, huh? <laughs> that's a six, so I don't think I do. <laughs> no, that's is she starts speaking some cute sounds that mean nothing except, hey, I'm about to eat a good meal. And then she presents okay. it all to you and she serves each and every one of you very carefully. She makes sure that you have meat on your plate and there are some potatoes that she found put on the side. And she very carefully, but somehow very quickly as well in a skilled fashion lays out slices of meat and three little potatoes in the form of kind of a smiley face on each one of your plates. Hmm. What Thank you, this is wonderful. Potatoes. Appreciate the meal. Absolutely. And they do have the scent and the over, the, the undertone of bacon. Hmm. She made sure to use her bacon grease. <laughs> wonderful. This is delicious. I'm so glad. I love cooking for people. Now, would you say you that this is a, a kind of... Rabbit. Would you say this is kind of meal that you could, like, make on the road? You could probably. It's pretty simple. If you have the fire and the ingredients and the, the cooking fat... Can I, can I have a list of the ingredients? Sure. You like to cook, Bo. Um, Are you a cook? Well, I wouldn't say I'm proficient in cooking, but if I'm out on the road... I'd rather have that than just having berries. <laughs> what about jerky? Have you had cured meats? Probably, not so yeah, not like of all kinds, but here and there. We'll have to make sure if you end up on assignment somewhere uh, and, and I can't be there with you, I'll make sure you, you leave with some good jerky. 
I can make that tonight! You yes. are far too kind. Oh, I'm happy to help. It's so nice to find... One of my favorite reasons for traveling is meeting new people and letting them have food and sit as if we were all home, because a lot of us are far from home. You know, don't take this the wrong way, but you seem awfully cheery. Are, what, how do you... Have you fought anything before? I'm just... I'm just curious here, because it sounds like you had a pleasant home back there. I mean, I don't know how long you've been traveling and all, but I don't know. Who taught you how to fight? You have a giant mace I see on your back there. Yes. Well, I, I don't, I suppose, make a habit of fighting. It's not what I set out to do. Um, well, it, Yeah, it just doesn't seem like it goes in your <laughs> nature all that much. Like, it seems like making meals and stuff like that is where your true passion is. So I'm curious about wanting to join basically a military group. Well, you don't only need fighters at places like this. We do need more than that. But I'm I'm getting better at fighting. It's protecting people is important. It's something I learned that if I want to protect the people I care about, I can't only feed them. And I also found that I'm a little too antsy to sit still. So I I had considered becoming a cleric of some lotl. It's my goddess. But there was a lot of sitting still to be done where I was. What I liked to do was move and go and I actually am not bad at fighting. I, I suppose I haven't done a lot of Well, do you mean fighting Midnight Beast? I meant fighting kind of in general. However, you do raise a valid point, and if you enjoy making everybody meals and stuff like that, potentially you can handle the situation without fights. You could just poison the food, disguise it with some herbs, put in their enemy's food, and then they'll kill themselves. That seems efficient but underhanded. Uh, I suppose. Yeah, how do you it's... spell the goddess name that, that she said? <laughs> some lotl. S O M. L O T L. Thank you. You're Bye. welcome. Seems a disservice to put poison in your lovely dishes. Well, I'm I not, agree. <laughs> I'm not saying put in them all dishes, but I'm saying, like, if you ended up on, like, an enemy camp or something like that, and you were like, oh, I'm gonna make you food, you can also then put, like, I don't know, cyanide in the food. Something like that. <laughs> well, I'm a little more interested in. Not so much the fighting side and the poisoning side, but really, I'm interested in the new beginnings. This whole territory is going to become something incredible, something new. It could end up being its own kingdom altogether, and that would be amazing. And I wanted to be part of it, because every new location, every new territory, every new kingdom, it has its own rituals, its own methods of doing things, and I wanted to be part of that, which is also why I was going to say why I picked my goddess, but why she really picked me, I think, for rituals, for adhering to them. I wanted to help this area find those and establish them. Oh, so is this ritual food that we in? No. This is just food I make for my mama. Okay. When she's on child number 12. But she shut that <laughs> down at this point, right? Like, there's not going to be a 15th member <laughs> coming along. Whoa. What? Why not? Well, not you again. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, she's probably done. <laughs> I mean, asking, I would oh, say yeah. anything north of six, <laughs> it's not a bad question to ask. <laughs> so, Leah, uh, are you nervous about the, the test today? What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think once again my goddess intervened by putting you guys in my testing room. <laughs> I wasn't sure I'd be able to figure it out. Like I said, I like to move a lot, so sitting still is a little difficult for me. <laughs> but you did it. Goddess, intervene a lot in your life. 
I think so. It's not always a direct one-on-one, -on -one and I look up and she comes down as the clouds part, and she sees me and says, Lear, it is time for you to take up your calling. It's not a lot like that. But in little things, like this opportunity. Is that what they call wishful thinking? Or? No, I think it's what they call divine intervention. Okay, I, I suppose that's fine. <laughs> I know it can be hard to understand or believe if you aren't religious <laughs> yourself, but there are numerous gods and I think that they all call to all of us, but we just don't all want to answer. It doesn't make you better or worse. It's just different. A nice way of putting it. Thanks. Yeah, they have a interesting ways that they want to work. I take you it you're have not some religious. Interesting though. ways you want to work. I'm not gonna lie, Bo. <laughs> hey, I, I get I get results. <laughs> you definitely get something. I'm sorry, Snow. Did you ask me a question? Yes, I I, I said I assume you're not religious then. That would be a correct assumption, yes. That explains a lot. I'm sorry, what was that, Stan? Nothing. Alright. Nothing. Alright. That's fine. Not for everyone. Have you known each other long? <laughs> you fight like your sibling. Who? <laughs> All of you. Are you We've sh known each other not very long well, at I mean, all. I mean, you had about, like, a herd I mean, of siblings. So that's a lot of combinations of personalities right there. True. You just seem like... I don't know. You you seem like you could become very interesting friends. Any friends are good that's friends. That's definitely the goal. Well, I think Viola and Stan spent a decent amount of time together. Viola certainly thinks she's got a very close friendship over there. Oh, Stan! That's... You were talking about her, yes? Uh... The Iron I Giant realize I didn't Steerwall, meet everyone's name. Steerwall over there? Yeah. We have matching crowns. <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> I, to be honest, I, like, I'm just gonna say, like, all of the facial expressions Catherine does, I picture staying doing fine. <laughs> so I'm over there being, like, Steerwall. She's not taken off her mask. She hasn't eaten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's staying. Staying wrapped up. She hasn't eaten yet? No. Oh. Stan, aren't Noted. you going to enjoy the food? It's very good. At a later point. You Would like... you like me to make it into jerky for you? Do you no, make... I'll I'll eat it later. Bo... Thank you very much. Bo, I'm gonna stop you right there, whatever question you were about to ask. I was just gonna I'm ask, gonna can you make really anything wrong about it? I was gonna say, can you make anything into jerky? Is that a problem? Alright. Uh the answer would be yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, <laughs> this has been lovely. It has. I... Thank you so much for cooking for us. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I actually realized um, I have to get something from upstairs. If you guys are still here, fantastic. And if not, I hope I'll see you in the morning. It sounds like she kind of glances around at the groups around you and is kind of scratching her head. Sounds like some people are already planning to leave. Like, oh, leave really? on assignment or leave, leave, like, <laughs> bolt? Well, I was referencing people leaving as in altogether leaving. I don't think they like how the test went. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna bolt, bolt in the night is probably the best time. You think so? I mean, yeah. Not for you, bolt. you did fine. Um, what? Exactly. I'm not saying I'm going anywhere. I'm just saying, in the event you need to bolt from a situation, it's better to wait until night. Well, I wish they would stay, but <laughs> you can't make them. I just... I thought the test went fine. It isn't... Well, like Bo was saying, it sounds like a lot of people came in expecting that all they would do would be swinging swords and shields, but... Thank goodness that's not the case. Well, to be honest, it's we don't know how all the tests went. We only know how ours went. They could have different tests for every group. So that way you can't tell them what to expect. Oh, I guess that makes sense. So maybe they got something they say, couldn't though, figure out. 
if people are going to leave after things are a little bit difficult or frustrating to them, then we're probably better off without them. I suppose. Everyone. This life is not for everyone. True. Very true. Well, if I do see you, then I'll see you. And if I don't, we'll have a good night. <laughs> we'll have to figure out you what rooms well. we're bunking in. Mm -hmm. Did you already pick your room? I thought, I didn't know we picked our room. I thought we just kind of, like went to a barracks guys gals two separate places are there rooms within the rooms so if the boys side looks anything like the girls side there's these two hallways and there's rooms on both sides and then there's lavatories in the middle of those sides and then in the middle there's this other lounge room or maybe the girls just get the nicer side Entirely possible. Yeah. I, I haven't seen where they expect us guys to sleep. I guess we'll find out when we get back. Well, if we are able to, and it looks like we are, because I saw girls kind of just throwing their bags around, find mine, and we can be in the same room. Of course, that sounds lovely. Brill. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. Well, thank you again for your help with the test. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll leave you with the bear. Have a good night, guys. <laughs> and she scurries back out of the night. mess hall. And she, as she's running, she kind of also has to like, fix her crown because it starts to come off as excited as she's bouncing around. She fixes it <laughs> and then runs out the door. So you guys enjoy your, your lovely uh, <laughs> evening snack. Spend a little time. Did you want to, for the sake of time... Well, I don't know if, uh, never mind. You enjoyed your meal. It's lovely. <laughs> you guys enjoy the rest of your little meal. Lear has run off. It is, the time is winding by. You do know, or you do see, and it appears clear over time, that you can choose your bunks. The rooms are not specifically labeled, but once you do get there, you do... You do see that um, there are sort of ways to pick your room. It doesn't seem anyone's like picking a room and moving people's stuff around. It just seems like you pick a bed and then that is your area to sleep. But time winds, time winds forward. Were you planning to meet anyone? Yes. <laughs> <this evening? laughs> yeah. So did we already separate and pick our rooms or are we still together right now? I'm leaving that to you guys. I figure you don't have to RP every moment between the next three hours. <laughs> but it, I'll, I'll leave it up to you what you decide you'd like to do. You're welcome to have had your drinks. You're welcome to, if there's someone specific you want to talk to. Well, but otherwise, time winds Snow down towards like, the hour. Uh, at some point, uh, Snow would like to pull Stain aside. Sure. For sure. Chat. All right. Glad to see you are still wearing your crown. I wasn't sure if you were going to or not, but I was hoping. You make these for many people. Yes, of course. She doesn't feel special Why? anymore. <laughs> Why roses? Well, black roses is a... I mean, you, you specify black, and then black roses are a symbol of death and mourning, and I feel like it fit your vibe. You're perceptive. Thank you. Do you know anything else about roses? I mean... Just in general? Yes. I mean, I know that they... I know red ones symbolize love and romance. Uh, usually... I don't know if I know anything specific to roses. More just the different colors that they typically represent. Like pink symbolizes gratitude or admiration. Do you One. know anything of the goddess Atala? Um, do I, actually? <laughs> Roll a religion check. That is my fourth nat one of the day. Oh my so gosh! No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, you are quite unfamiliar with, with this goddess. For a moment, you have one of those brain farts where just, like, <laughs> the word goddess doesn't even make sense to you. And you're just staring at saying, like, who? Atala. I just like totally Who? zoned out for half a second. Yeah, it's very, it's very sorry, uncharacteristic no. of of Snow to just be like, I'm sorry, I wasn't even listening. <laughs> Are you all right? 
Yes. No. Sorry. Um, no, I don't. I don't believe so. She is the goddess of life, vocations, and souls. And one of her symbols is the rose. She is who I follow very closely. Um, in fact, and stay and will slowly take off one of her gloves again. And in her palm, she shows Snow a medallion that is a dark burnished gold in the shape of a flat, flattened rose that's wrapped around her palm. It is her holy symbol that she uses for her spellcasting and things. I keep the sardi all, all the time. Never caught without it. So when you gave me a crown of roses, it's one of the first, as Lear put it, divine interventions in a while. Blackened roses. I've only seen one once before. And that was when one of the roses on my goddess's sash turned black as though burnt. What color are they normally? They're normally... normally red and pink. Wait, sorry, did you say you saw her? I did. As in a dream? Or... I think you describe it as a vision, perhaps a dream. It was a long time ago. What's a long time for you? This was, hmm, this was over a decade ago. And is that how long you've been following Atala? No, I've been following Atala since I was, long as I can remember. Our connection goes back quite a long way. I can't remember life without a connection to her. What's that like? What's it like to not? It is all I know. How could I know different? I don't know. I ask you a question. You just did. But yes. And you see him. <clears throat> this is probably the most serious you've ever seen him before. Do you... Do you fear death? No. Either giving it or receiving it? I believe that death is something that must be earned. And that it becomes the start of the next adventure of our lives. It is not something to be given out carelessly, nor to be received recklessly. And do you have much experience with that? A fair amount. My experience, death is cruel and a thief. It is. Very often. It's not meant to be that way. Many people die before they are meant to. Many people live when they shouldn't. So do you see that as your job then? To guard that? Indeed. Death is sacred. I must be respected. Thank you. You're welcome. For this conversation. I pray that your next experience with death, whatever it may be, you may see its gentleness and not its cruelty. Thank you. And stay and we'll reach out and awkwardly put a hand on his shoulder and like... <laughs> is, it the, is it the gloved hand? <laughs> yes, well, the gloved hand. <laughs> yes. Snow laughs just a little bit because of the awkwardness. <laughs> <laughs> it is not difficult to pick up that Stan is not the most physically affectionate. <laughs> that one's not her love language. It's okay. <laughs> Pass that off. The love language is silence. <laughs> it's distance. It's I was going to say it's, it's quality time. <laughs> it makes the heart grow fonder, you know. Words of affirmation through a sending spell from far away. <laughs> <laughs> Introverts everywhere be like <laughs> that face when you kind of agree with what the bad guy's saying. <laughs> All right. So are you guys coming back over to Viola and I then? After that? Yeah, so Stan's it... gonna put her glove back on. So you come <laughs> Bo's gonna be uh talking to Viola. So Viola, what I'm thinking is, if we go out on a mission, 
maybe we get Lear to also come with us because she could be like a traveling cook. And I mean, she's a little bit, she might fall behind, but we can make like a little papoose and we could attach her to stay in. And then, a what? <laughs> like a little like a carrier, you know, like get some Like cloth. a baby carrier? Yeah, there, there you go. I mean, if I stay in, it's about equal size. So then we can just, it'll be easy for her to pick up. No take psychic damage. <laughs> <laughs> We could just like walk at a pace that's okay for her, or like I mean, get horses or something. Or oh, I didn't think about horses. Yeah, baby carrier was your first thought, really. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs a baby carrier? Huh? Well, I'm just thinking. According that... to Bo, Lear needs a baby carrier. Well, no, she comes she I said an adventure. not a child. I said a papoose is what I said. Which is a baby carrier, correct? Well, that's one way to interpret it. You could probably put like a tiny dog on it too. Uh, it doesn't need to be. She is not a She's dog not a nor dog a child. Dog. Well, well, I'm not saying she is. I'm saying like <laughs> anyway. This is all speculation. Things that have to align. Uh, I'm very mm -hmm. confused. It's fine. It's fine. It might not even occur. But if it did, do you have cloth? I'm sure we can find some, but I, I don't have think that we should. Okay, well, all right. It's fine. It's fine. Let's move on to the next thought. <laughs> on our next tale, Arno um, wanted to meet up by the stables at midnight. Are you being smart? That took a really long time to get there. What isn't the it? Walmart? I've never been <laughs> to Walmart. <laughs> I'll go to keep stealing from happening. So it's not good to go up to people and attack them. Because if so, I should take off my armor. I have no desire to have a mental link with you. So, what are we waiting for, friend? So don't want to alarm you that there's a weirdo in here. Now, Ooh. I'm not sure exactly what the nature is. He might just be a stable boy, as he says. He also might be trying to burn the place down and might try and kill us all. 